In this video clip, I want to talk about, again, something from Chapter 6 of uh, the Core 1 edXL syllabus about sequences and series, and in particular, recurrence relationships. Okay, so it's sequences and recurrence relationships. First of all, I'm going to begin by going over some of the concepts and the notation, and it is really important. It's also how you recognise that you're looking at a recurrence relationship. Okay. So, if we start by looking at that, the key thing to notice is the, there's always some sort of uh, difference between the two suffixes there, okay? So, we've got n plus 1 over here and n on this one. And what this really means is, whatever this one is, this is one bigger than it. So, if that was 2, that's 3, that's 4, that's 5, whichever. It's, how it's describing how you get from this term, what function you do to it, to get to the next term. The other thing that makes it really obvious you're looking at a recurrence relationship is you're always given a term as well. You need that, otherwise you just can't begin to generate the sequence. Okay, So normally you get given a, a formula here like this, so it'll tell you how you get the next one from the previous one, and the most common thing is you get the first one. But actually you could just be given any of them and have to work forwards or backwards from that. Okay, here's a numerical example. So I've got some, here's my relationship that I've had described. So this says to get the next one, you do the number seven and take away two lots of the previous one. And here, like say, I couldn't possibly get started unless they told me what the very first one is. What I've done here is I've just shown you a bit more explicitly how exactly you work out the second one. So I've used this formula, but instead of all these n's, I've used the actual numbers that I'm interested in. Okay, so u2 is 7 take away 2 lots of u1, and u3 is 7 take away 2 lots of u2, and so on and so on and so on. So that should be helpful for you. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work them out. So perhaps if you want, you could pause this clip, have a go at trying to figure out what those values are, and see if you agree with me. Okay, so the first one is 7, take away 2 lots of u1, and u1 was 3, so 7 take away 2 lots 3, 7 take away 6, which is 1. And the next one here, u3, this is 7 take away 2 lots of u2, so 7 take away 2, which is 5. u4, 7 take away 2 lots of u3, 7 take away 10, so I get minus 3 now. And you just have to be really careful for the last one because I'm actually subtracting a negative number. So 7 take away minus 6, which is the same as 7 add 6, which is 13. Right, occasionally you get some bit more complicated ones, okay? So you'll have a look at here and you can see that I've got n plus 2 and then these other ones here. And it's still a function that works on here. What's going on is you need to do something to two previous terms in order to find the next one. And because of that, you need to be told two consecutive terms in order to calculate any others. Right, this is one of those examples actually, so we might as well have a good look at this. So this is saying if I look at this term and the next term, I need to do stuff to both of those in order to get the one that follows. I've been given two terms, which is what you'd expect, and this is an algebraic example, so some people get a bit nervous about this, but you just have to do exactly what you would do with numbers. Keep replacing the algebra in over and over and over again. Right, we're starting by trying to answer part A, which is to find u3. So if I go to this formula, look, u3 is u2 take away p lots of u1. And I wrote that in there, and then I'm just going to have to work that out now. Okay, there you can see uh, u2, which was 4, and take away p times u1. And u1 is 2, 2 times p, there you go. Okay, we're going to do part b now. And part b is asking us to find an expression for u4. And again, using the same formula, u4 will be u3 take away p lots of u2, and I wrote that at the top there. Now I just need to fill in the values that I know. So u3 is what I worked out for part a, and u2, I've been given that up here. Okay, so this 4 minus 2p, that's what I got for u3, and u2, 
is equal to 4, so that's where that 4 comes from, and 4 times p, and I'm taking it away. And that means my expression for u4 is 4 minus 6p. OK, we're going to have a go for part c now, but there's some extra information here. It says that u4 is twice the value of u3, and I've written that here. So that means that if you double u3, you get u4. And these are the previous bits of the question that we've done already. So I'll just put them there so that we can see them if it's helpful. OK, in this step I've saved you my dodgy handwriting and I've also included some of the details that we've got from this box. So u4 was 4 minus 6p, so that's where that came from. And u3 there, look, I'm doubling it, u3 was 4 minus 2p. And what happens is, if you basically do what you would do, I guess sort of a grade C GCSE kind of question, you'd expand the brackets and you'd collect all the p's on one side and numbers on the other, and you'd try and figure out what p is from that. You should be able to prove to yourself that p is the number negative 2. So that's an example of one where we've got these, the next term you need to find it by knowing the previous two, you can see in the question that it's going to be a recurrence relation because it tells you, but even if you couldn't, the fact that it gives you those two and it's connecting like that should be a massive hint. It's got algebra in, which some people occasionally get frightened of, but as I've shown you, you just keep substituting that in again and again and again from part A to B to C, and that should be something you're capable of doing. Right then, just before I finish speaking to you, I just really wanted to draw your attention to this, this special case. Recurrence relationships are in this particular chapter and they connect to other elements of the chapter. It's this one. This is a, a special form of it. This is saying to get the next term, I add a number to it. Okay, so that's exactly how you do that. And that would make you, I hope, think of the sort of form that you're likely to, to find. This sort of an example means you're going to get an arithmetic sequence. And there's a whole load of stuff about arithmetic sequences um, to do with finding nth terms and various other different things, even adding them up in arithmetic series. So you just need to be careful. And if you ever spot that your recurrence relationship is giving you a list of numbers that change by the same amount each time, be pleased about that because you know an awful lot about these things. Okay, thanks for listening to this. Um, best of luck with the rest of your work.